Well, hello, friends. Um, I just figured I would like vlog and try to document my journey for like my own purposes and maybe, who knows, maybe this will help somebody else. Um, uh, I mean, any kind of diagnosis, breast cancer or otherwise, it affects everybody in the family, not just the patient. Um, and I've joined some breast cancer groups on Facebook, which have been absolutely amazing, super helpful, super uplifting. Um, but there are like, uh, family members and friends that have joined, um, asking like how to help and they're trying to like understand, you know, what their friend or family member is going through. So I was like, why not do a vlog and maybe help somebody else? Um, so I'm parked at the park and I laugh because I dropped Kiana off this morning. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm a lunch lady at uh, her middle school. I was there first, so technically it's my school. Um, but it's really screwing with me because I'm not working and Wednesdays are a late start. And with me not having to wake up at 4.30 and get in the shower and put my face on and get the kids moving, um, Wednesdays really screws with me. So uh i i was ready but i was sitting there doing my little puzzle and i'm like man i feel like i got a lot of free time and then i was like oh crap i gotta wake up the kids <laughs> which is ironic because i've been telling them uh as i go through chemo it's going to kick my butt um you guys need to be independent little people and set your alarms and wake up on your own don't rely so heavily on me and uh today was a testament of that and I can't even blame the chemo because I, I feel fine. Uh, it's just me uh, and trying to adjust to not working. But um, anywho, like I just want to say that I'm not an advocate. I'm not an expert. I'm just a 42 year old lady, wife and mom, friend, coworker, daughter that unfortunately has been diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, I'm just navigating this journey, but um, like most of us that have been diagnosed, you're like, oh my God, I, I never thought this would happen. So, you know, like if you have it in your genetics, like it's hereditary, you've got family members that have had cancer, you know, you're obviously at higher risk, but it can, ha it can happen to anybody. Um, my grandmother had keep breast cancer um so it's always been in the back of my mind but I'll admit that like I wasn't adamant about doing like my self breast exams because I didn't I would do it when I think about it um but I did do the, the genetic testing uh they did uh a blood work sample and like tested my DNA which is crazy and I thankfully I don't carry the mutation um, this was just kind of a freak accident but it just goes to show that anybody can get it um, and even men uh, so breast cancer is um, the number one diagnosed breast cancer and uh, it can affect men and women generally it's women but men can be affected too and I'm not going to say names, but in one of the breast cancer groups, a lady had joined because her husband, her husband got diagnosed with breast cancer and it's stage three. And so it is rocking their world and she's joined the group to try to figure out how to support him. And he is embarrassed. And that is so sad. Um, no matter what kind of cancer you get, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be ashamed. You know, it's not something you chose. It doesn't make you less of a person. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, sometimes it's just the luck of the draw and so I just want to put it out there that it's nothing to be ashamed of and that's that's part of the reason I feel so compelled to you know just share this share my journey um because it can happen to anybody and it, there's there's no rhyme or reason I can't say it's because I did this or I did that or I didn't do this or I didn't do that like shit happens and you just you kind of got to roll with it so here we are uh, I wanted to say, if you see me looking down, I wrote some notes. Um, I wanted to say that it's not an automatic death sentence. You know, it, cancer doesn't always just give you an expiration date. Um, granted, it is scary as shit. It, it rocked my world getting that phone call. Um, but it doesn't mean that you are going to die from cancer if you end up 
unfortunately getting a diagnosis. Um, there are so many, so many survivors. And yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't wish this on anyone, um, but I am, I'm grateful that it is 2023 and we have all these resources and technology and modern medicine. And so my, my outlook is, is positive, it's hopeful. Um, I plan on being here for a long, long time. So just know that it's not just an automatic death sentence. Uh, I will go into details on like a, a separate day of, you know, my, uh, the beginning of my journey, like how I figured it out. But I did have a lump that I told my doctor about. Uh, and okay, I did, I do, I still have this lump. Um, but I am a triple negative, which means mine is not fed by hormones estrogen and progesterone all that it has no effect um it's triple negative invasive ductal carcinoma or idc for short which makes me giggle because idc sounds like i don't care uh but i am told that it is more one of the more uh, aggressive breast cancers so i'm just listening to my doctors and doing what i'm told and trying to stay positive uh, I don't know what stage it is yet. I haven't asked my doctor and they haven't mentioned it. Um, I'm going to guess maybe one or two. Uh, so far it doesn't look like it has spread to my lymph nodes. Um, I have my next chemo treatment tomorrow. That'd be number two. I think I'm on day 14. And I'm, I'm doing really good. Uh, I, I'm going to ask the doctor what stage I am. I'm kind of apprehensive to ask because I don't know if I want to know but it doesn't it doesn't change my outlook I'm just I'm gonna keep doing what I do and living my best life and getting through this uh so my treatment plan is six months of chemo um I've done one so far I'm gonna do four treatments of AC chemo uh also known as like the red devil which my chemo nurse refuses to call red devil she calls it the red angel to each his own um, and then I will be doing, uh, after the four AC chemos, I will be doing Taxol. And yeah, it's going to be like six months of chemo. Uh, as you can still, as you see, I, I still have all my, my hair. Um, I am shocked and grateful that I am on day 14. And I have not experienced any hair loss other than like what's normal shedding. Um, I honestly thought I would be needing to shave my head in like the next day or two but here i am still washing my hair and drying it and all that good stuff um but my nurse said that day 19 is usually when people end up taking the clippers to their head uh hair usually starts to fall out slowly and then in clumps and that's when people usually end up just shaving it all off because it's it's just easier and the shedding is horrible it ends up all over your pillow and your hat and your clothes on the floor it's like worse than having like a long-haired dog um so i am mentally prepared to shave my head but i am i'm grateful to still have hair and not look like a chemo patient um but when that day comes i'll embrace it it's all part of the journey right uh yeah oh my port if you're squeamish look away it's not gross but i mean it is it is kind of gross because it's like a medical incision, but my, my port is healing nicely. So this is where they made an incision and you can kind of see this bump. That's where my actual port is and I can feel it. It's yeah, you can see it's like a lump and that's where they actually give me uh, my chemo treatments and uh, we're going to do blood draws from it too. So that's kind of cool. And then this incision uh, there's, there's the port here and it has like a, a soft spot that they can punch the needle through. And then there's a straw that goes up and this is where the straw goes into my, my jugular vein, which is kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm able to get blood draws and chemo treatments through there. And they've figured out that this is better long-term for chemo patients because the medicine goes directly into your bloodstream uh into like a main artery uh where it gets distributed faster because it's actually it comes out like right above my heart 
and just flaps around. Um, but that way it doesn't fry like the veins in my arms. Um, so that's kind of cool. It's nice that it's healing nicely. Uh, it does feel kind of weird sometimes. I mean, it's a, it's a foreign body under your skin. Um, it doesn't really bother me. Thankfully it's, it's healed enough that it's not like itchy or tender or anything, but it is weird. And, um, being a more well endowed girl, um, you know, sometimes if I am squatting down on my knees, push my chest up, I can feel it kind of shift up, which is an odd feeling. Oh, like when I reach into the washing machine, we've got a top loader. So whenever I reach in with my right hand, um, cause I'm right handed, it, like everything gets pushed up and I can feel it go, Oop, which is an odd feeling, but I've gotten used to it. Um, so that is my port. Um, and yeah, uh, next on the agenda is I got to take this rental truck back to Lacey. <clears throat> still waiting on my truck. Uh, it's still at the body shop. They haven't started work on it yet because the damages are over $10,000 from when the bus hit it, which is crazy. Um, you would think it wouldn't be that much, but yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole nother story. But yeah, my truck is still sitting. They haven't even started repairs. And because we've had this Ford for a month now to extend our rental agreement, I have to pop in there and let them walk around the truck and make sure that, you know, I haven't like totaled it or whatever else. Uh, and then I have to resign the rental agreement. So that's first thing on my agenda. Um, and then Later today, I'm going to go to Renton with my friend. Uh, her daughter's car is in the shop, and so uh, they are supposed to be done with it today. So I'm going to go on a little mini road trip with my bestie, which is cool because it gets me out of the house. Gives me a reason to put on pants that aren't elastic. Um, and I get some bonus friend time since I don't get to see her at work anymore since I'm staying home. And yeah, that's where we are with that. Um, so tomorrow is my second chemo uh, and my parents are going to take me. And I'm so fortunate to have such an amazing uh, family support system and friends. And I'm so grateful for all of you guys. Thank you. Like truly, I, I can't even put it in words. The amount of love and support you guys have shown is just, it blows me away. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll try to film tomorrow and let you guys see how it goes. I'll give you a little sneak peek. May you never, ever have to experience it. But for those of you that are curious, um, you can see how it goes. Okay. All right. Bye guys. <laughs>